Let's go to uh, the big screen. We've only got one uh, big release this week, and that's The Purge, which only I apparently suffered through, or went to. Oh, well, suffered. No, actually, it, it's a fun movie, but I'll, I'll explain it. Okay, in the future, apparently America goes crazy. So in order to fix America, they decided to enact The Purge. Each year, for 12 hours on one single day, Americans get to uh, cleanse their palate of hate and anger, everything they have in their hearts, and they can commit any single crime they want without, with zero consequences. That's a genius idea. Never happened with our government, but genius idea. Uh, NR James Sandin, who's played by Ethan Hawke, and apparently he designed all of the state-of-the-art security systems in his very nice neighborhood. He's the guy that designed all of them, specifically to keep all those out that are purging uh, this one time a year. So he holds up in his fancy house with his wife, Mary, who's played by Lena, he- Lena Headey, uh, and their kids, Charlie and Zoe. Well, what happens is once the purge actually starts, their idiot son, Charlie, decides to let in a homeless man, <laughs> which is, by the way, the only black person in the entire cast. Just pointing it out. Um, which then puts a giant bullseye on, on their house. So, of course, some purges want the homeless guy so bad that they offer to let the Sandins live, they decide to send him out. But they will kill all of them if they don't. So from here on out, it's just a fight for your survival to, until the purge finally ends. I'll be the first to admit the concept of the purge is absolutely ridiculous. There, there's no way this would ever happen. The idea that all year long, people of every economical stature forego violence until they get their little 12-hour window is, is a little bit hysterical. But <laughs> even still, concept that we get all that time to do whatever we want, really intriguing. I would... Kind of like that to happen, because like, like we said, talked about before, we each got a list. Uh, the first half of the movie, very suspenseful, had me on the edge of my seat. The push-pull about whether or not to send this guy out to his certain death. Um, what would you do? Yes. What? Yes, I would send him to his death, <laughs> yes. Well, there's a lot of push and pull. Is it right? Is it wrong? You know, would you would you rip, put those that you care about at risk no. by keeping him in your house? <laughs> Look at Justin, he's... <laughs> I don't have any debate. He's out. No moral debate. We're good. Nope. You ain't my family? Fuck yeah. Well, dead, yeah. Dead, dead man in my hallway. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heedy and Hawk are, are very solid, both as strong. It's like a good uh, crime fighting team. Maybe like <laughs> or, or a sitcom. It's it the does. name of the band I'm starting up. <laughs> Heedy and, and Hawk. Hawk. Heedy and Hawk. <laughs> They're both very strong parents. They believe in the purge as well as they're, they're, they do a good job of being panicky people who are willing to kill an innocent man just to survive. The kids, especially this moron Charlie, who, by the way, he lets this homeless guy in and puts the entire family in danger and never even gets a scolding. Like nobody throughout the entire movie says to him, that was dumb. Why did you do that? He's just like, hey, what? That's what we're – I want to help people. Fuck you. Help. Lost him out. Yeah, I would have thrown his ass out. Deficient. I got a question though. Yeah, because I've seen the trailer and the guy like comes to the house alone, mm-hmm. and the kid lets him in. How do these other bad guys, or whatever, know that he's there? What do you mean? Is it is he's it down the street watching? Probably. What, were they like? No, the the camera actually can. They have cameras surrounding the area, mm-hmm. and they can pick up sound outside, and they hear the, the the man walking down the street, screaming and yelling, pleading for help. Oh, okay. So, so they've got access to these videos. Yeah. No, they're watching it live as he runs down the street. Oh, okay. No, uh, the neighbors ratted them out. The neighbor said, "Oh, okay." He ran into their house. Uh, that's gotcha. that's how they found them. Okay. Um, so you know, the, the only other person that we really see their face is a villain who's played by this Ryan Gosling creepy clone named Rise Wakefield. I mean, literally, you think he's trying to be Ryan Gosling throughout the movie, um, but he's truly menacing. He's charming. It's a solid performance. And when they break the security system down. In less than a minute, mind you, the state of the art system comes down in less than a minute. <laughs> like seriously, when it happens, if you don't chuckle out loud, I don't know what movie you're watching. <laughs> the movie from that point on just becomes paint by numbers, retread of the strangers. That's oh, yeah. yeah, that's kind of where it went. Eh, it went from oh, I'm really into it to all right, but I know what's going to happen now. The Purge was directed by James DeMonico, and he can handle suspense just fine. The problem with the movie is the writing. The film started as a, as a real look at where our princi- principles truly stop, and I really wish that would have been the entire movie because that was really interesting to me, except apparently at Brian and Justin's house because they just killed people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it, would be a, it would be a short film. <laughs> Eight minutes. N- not nine minutes of, uh, of build-up and then one dead guy in the, in the hallway. <laughs> 
Well, Roll credits. <laughs> and then be chucking his ass out to the people who want it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last half is just every thriller you've ever seen, so it's not going to surprise you. There is a little twist at the end, but it's nothing mind-blowing. And if you really think about it, you can see it coming. The Purge, I thought it was very suspenseful um, for most of the film. It's just not worthy of the hype, and it really missed its potential. If $10 is the full price of admission, this one's worth 6 bucks.